Really? Do you really have to do that? Yeah. You're so childish. It's like I'm riding a horse. Whoa, Nanny, woo! Really? Hey, do you know what tomorrow is? Tomorrow is... Our one year anniversary. No, 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 it's not. One year anniversary no, when we started married the stream. Oh, doing this. Yeah. A year? I know, right? With our ADHD, I'm kind of shocked we managed to commit to something for a full you, 12 you, months. You have that, actually. That's a you thing. What do you mean? That's a you thing. About anniversaries? No, about not, not being able to focus on something. Hi. Welcome. Really? You bit. want to start off the show with that firecracker? Ask me about my just... beard. Why, Todd? Yeah. Why do you have facial hair? Because I'm stinking lazy, that's why. It'll go away. It looks kind of nice, actually. So we're, we're having this big discussion at, at home. Uh, uh, I cannot wait for my daughter's birthday to be over every day. When, when do they grow out of this? Because literally for the last 365 days. We are not kidding. She's talked about her birthday, and I know it's going to start again on March 4th once she's officially seven. Had and her birthday. Go on again, but it's like literally, and I, and I get it because at this age, that's like the only thing you have power over. You know, you're only thing of control, but literally every day. Gone through uh, ponies, a uh, real size uh, uh, carousel. Explosions, We've, yeah. Uh, a parade, Princess dresses. Uh, the float. It's the, the tiara, that was, yeah. Which and not one of those cheap ones. She wanted the real one. Which is not going to happen. I had to explain the Queen of England was using hers, so we couldn't. But no, so what we came up with is we've got scales and tails coming to the house, which I'm really excited about. Because Zoe's, Zoe's like the most awesome combination of like nuts and princess. Mm. So she really wanted the big snakes and she wanted the tortoises. And, and if you saw scales and tails here on the show, you know how much fun they are. I mean, I'm really excited. So we're having like a cool little birthday party show and play Minecraft, and then she also wanted to play Princess Dress Up, which is going to suck for the boys in her class, but I bet they'll fit just great into those Don't, dresses. No shaming. No, they're going to fit great to those dresses. All right, yeah. so, and that pretty much wraps up the party. Yeah, you would think. So we so, said to I was so proud of you, because you did focus, and you said, listen, RSVP. I can focus. Yeah, okay. No, so I sent out the e-fights, and I guess I, I, we've never really had this before, but maybe it's because we've always had it out of the house, but... So I sent it out, and it was for, like, the 30 kids in her class. And people started re RSVPing for, like, two, three, four people. And I'm like, wait, wait a minute, wait. Because I know sometimes moms come or a dad. And then, like, I Which got one RSVP encourage. for six, and I'm like, I, I, can't like fit, all, I can't fit that many people in my house. All and, the siblings, and we haven't even gotten all the RSVPs back. Yeah, and so I, I sent out another well, nice... Well, first of all, first of all, we've been talking to everyone about this, and we're talking to you right no, now. No, so I just want to know, is this, is this, is this normal? normal? Is this a thing that... That people just, you know, that they bring extras, and I, and if we could, that wouldn't be a big deal. But, that, you know, they, they said no. We've got wild animals, and you, they asked specifically how many people we had come. And they said this is all you can have because we can't stress out the animals. And so now I'm panicking, going, how do I, how do I answer them back and wait, tell wait, them? Wait. <laughs> last year, last year, um, we did Nickel Arcade, right? Uh -huh. And did anybody do that then? A few people brought siblings, because we like paid, one. we had to pay at the door and yeah. get everybody in. Uh huh. Yeah. There were like one or two. Oh, like, that's not bad. Not one or two. I, one or two I didn't mind. But, but we're in a house now. And it's a small one. It's a small house. Yeah. And so, I, so I've, I've been panicking. and I, I, So I sent out a nice note going, hey, Scales and Tails told me this is all we're allowed. And I'm very sorry but that there was any confusion. And, and then? <sighs> what happened? That really hasn't settled anything. So I, is that normal? How, would, how else would you say it? I mean, because I'm still getting RSVPs for multiple people. What? What do what you do now to, I mean, if you're on Facebook with this, can you just give me some advice? Because I'm not sure what else to say now. And I feel like like the bad mom, like, oh, does everyone else like, I, I, no, I suck yeah, at this apparently. We're going to work on it. Help us out, please. So, yeah, if you, if you have a way you get around this, will you let me know? Cause I have a hankering. Apparently my, my response was not good enough. I have a hankering for the morning mountain camp. Why, well, there it is, Brio Technologies. They're your experts in lighting, sound, and video. They can bring your company into this actual century. Uh, go to uh, BrioAudioVisual.com. I'm still apologizing to you about the cough, but oh. I think I'm coming out of it. Good morning, Steve Green. How are you, sweetie? Nice to see you. Good morning, Off Corinne. Facebook. Good morning, Jen. Oh, Jen says my son turns 11 on Thursday. He just sent me a list of things he wants through an email. <laughs> an morning, email. Gross. Send back these are the That's things a... you're going to be disappointed about. No, I bet the kid's got the SKU number, too. I like that. That's funny. All right. Um, we should uh, talk about the truckers. This is now, so interesting. Now, may I say, there's, there's a history behind this. Um, Explain. The police have been working a little bit with the uh, trash collection guys over the last five or six years, if you remember, mm -hmm. because using them as eyes 
mm-hmm. the community. Mm-hmm. Because they're out there, they're driving around. That was awful. They can see a lot of stuff. And so they ask them to be a little more aware and don't but don't forget and make that call if you need to. Well, it's interesting. They actually want to make this a bill that would require truck drivers to undergo training. Truck truck drivers. Truckers. Like semis. Yeah, truckers to spot victims of human trafficking before they can renew their commercial driver's license. I'm not sure how I feel. Say that again. Say that again. The Davis lawmaker wants them to, to be forced to do complete a course right. on awareness on sexual trafficking before they're allowed to get their commercial driver's license or to renew it. And that seems... I 99% of these guys and women are, are parents. I think they would all go, yeah, I'll totally take it. Because they're they're at uh, they're but at I the Flying J's. They're at the pilot's uh, gas stations on the freeway. Where you see a lot of, a lot of transit. And when there's a lot of people on a ma- major turnpike, you know, yeah. not turnpike, or even Or even troubling, even more troubling, isolated places where maybe people are. Right. So, but, but, so I think everyone would be happy to take the course. I'm not sure that it seems punitive <coughs> to, to block them from getting their... Yeah. License before they can do it. Plus the fact that um, the stewardesses, we talked to them. We talked flight to attendants. The flight, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, flight attendants. And the people who work the desk also. We did the story last week where they were catching people doing this and they saved the kids. Because like, there's, sign, yeah, there's right. signs of that, that you look for with human trafficking, obviously. But, but I, think, I think the whole thing about your license, I think all the facts could fit on a piece of paper this big, couldn't it? You look for these 10 things. I'm sure they could do a simple online course. Yeah, a, a video. Just watch a video. I mean, there's a reason they call them the Knights of the Road. Because I've seen, we've had truckers help us in the past where we broke down or something happened. And yep. I've seen. You I've guys seen are awesome. Do just amazing And women. Things. Men and women. So Truck attendants. But I think that they're. <laughs> that's kidding. That's so sad. I, they're parents too. I think they would totally take. Oh, they would. The they would. I'm not sure you have to like block them from I'm something. I'm always or, amazed at truckers. It's like. I'm getting up in the morning and I'm driving to Seattle, and I'm like, and then I'm going to turn around and come, come back. back. How do you do that? Or, or the big long haulers, they go back to like to New England and then come back, and I'm just like, what a, what a life. I mean, can you it's imagine amazing. all the stuff you see though? It means all the amazing. weird stuff you see. Oh yeah. I know that's what makes it so cool though. I've talked to truckers who have seen UFOs and they've, you know, they've seen like really strange, like random people standing by the side of the road. Naked it, people driving in a Volkswagen. Very attractive, you know, really. But it's just kind of cool. But I think they would be happy to do it. I'm not sure you have to like <coughs> pin it to something like it's punitive though. No, no. I, but I, but I like the fact that people are aware on it and stuff, uh, aware of it. Um, exports from different states. What do you have on this? Iconic exports, as a matter of fact. You know, this really surprised me, some of these. I was kind of shocked, but um, you're, I it's suspect in there. you know what Utah's is. But let's go through some of the others. Like California's wine. Right. 90% of uh, the wine in the United States comes from California. I, I did not know that. that. This one's going to really shock you, Colorado. What? Iconic export. Oh, you can't export pot. No, they do. You can't. But they do anyway. Don't do it. That's true. Delaware, this is so weird. Nylon. They're Delaware's, nylon, Delaware's nylon. main import export is, is nylon. Bol- bolts of fabric, yeah. perhaps, yes. It's like, oh, all right. Hawaii, this one looks kind of interesting. Yeah. Coffee. Oh, yeah. I thought there's Kona, only two Kona, other, Kona, Kona. Yeah, there's Kona only two coffee. other states in the USA that are even able to grow coffee commercially. This is true. This is true. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, Illinois is deep dish pizza. Okay. They I can live with that. export it? No, oh, it's deep dish pizza. If you need a deep dish pizza, I can go that you're prepared direction. to do anything. Yes. Um, this is so funny. Kansas, the Wizard of Oz. Uh, par- I thought it paraphernalia? Would, I thought it would be corn, but the merchandising for the Wizard of Oz is still a primary export. I had no idea. Isn't that amazing? But think of all the different merchandising you would do with that. Oh, I know. I mean, Flying Oz, monkeys, dude. Well, yeah. Kentucky, not a surprise here. Fried foods. Oh, nice. Cholesterol. They export cholesterol. By the way, Kentucky Fried Chicken actually came from here in Utah, but... State looks, Street and 45th South. It looks delicious. It does look. Oh, man, now I'm hungry. Um, Maine. Lobster. Of course. That's Done. a given. And here we are, Utah. Here we uh, are, Utah. Uh, Red Wing Shoes, Minnesota. Utah. Utah. It would be the fry sauce. I, I'm not sure I'm going to go with that. Fry sauce. Fry sauce. That's it? That's what we're known for, fry sauce. First jello, now this. We're Can we people. have anything more substantial? Condiments, that's... Right, fry sauce could actually be a beverage if you look at it right. For the way people drink it. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, yeah. it's a given. This so, is true. <laughs> all right, I thought this was a really interesting story because I thought it was very sane and very smart without being wildly uh, disruptive. Do you have the Ben Lomond story? No, I don't. 
Okay, I had hoped you had, but your, your stuff's all, all all cluttered. No, here. I've got That's it here. Why. I mean, no, I've got everything organized. I just don't have that one. But let me tell you about it really quickly. It's it's very cool. Basically, uh, the students at Ben Lomond High School um, wanted to do something that was specific and was profound regarding the school shooting, and uh, I thought this was amazing. So, um, what they want to do is they want to stand quietly their, at their desk for three minutes to call attention to the continuing gun violence in schools. Nice. Now, the protest is going to begin on Monday at 2:14, and it's going to be every Monday thereafter for the rest of the school year. Interesting. Now, they're calling the movement "Stand for 2:14," and the significance of 2:14 obviously is the fact that the latest school shooting in Florida was on 2:14 on February yeah. 14th, and. Uh, they uh, are going to stand for three minutes, ending at 2.17 in honor of the 17 lives that were lost. Interesting. But I, I love this because it's not wildly over the top. It's powerful. It's incredibly powerful. Right. I don't think there's, even the pissiest school superintendent in the world couldn't say, well, this is totally disruptive. I mean, it's really See, powerful. See, I'm on the other end. I'm, I'm all for the walkout. And I, I, and I think and I think that... I'll that totally support it. I'm there for a couple different reasons. Number one... It's the young people who are going to make any changes that need to be made. Number two, uh, they are exercising their right to do this. Number three, um, I think the teachers who and the, 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 they're going to suspend them and stuff like that, I'd rather have them participate in the process. And I know it's just like, you're... you're <laughs> what, could be, well, what could be a better learning experience? They're taking direct responsibility, well, frankly, in this particular case, doing for their something. lives. Anyway. They're doing, but they're understanding politics. They're understanding the hierarchy of, of the power of lobbyists. They're yeah. understanding gun laws. They're understanding jurisprudence. Uh. They're understanding, uh, you know, peaceful protest. How can you not say that this is everything these kids should be doing? And there was one powerful comment that actually came from you. I saw somebody uh, going off, and I think it was actually somebody in a school, Texas, a school superintendent who said, who do these kids think they are? They're just kids. They can't right. tell me what to do. Right. And Todd said, well, since they're the ones who are actually the targets right now, yeah, they actually... Being hunted and killed. Yeah, they actually get to do what they They can do whatever they want. And, 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 so, and, so, and so I think the point is, like, like when I was in high school, uh, we protested. We did a walkout. That that's because we wanted pizza twice a week. And how important is this? So anyway... I'm proud of them, and I'm proud I, of that I, moment. I think it's really cool. If, if my kid was in high school right now, it'd be like, oh, um, do it. Well, we had a group of East High students come by the house the other day, and they were raising money for the bus trip back to Washington. I said, well, totally donate. Right. Are you kidding? I'm on it. And they were telling me about what their plans were and how they were going to coordinate with the people here who were doing the, be a part the march of it. up to Capitol Hill here. Be and, a part of it. Uh, how can you not say this is like the greatest thing they could do? Right. They're taking direct responsibility and interest in their lives and their future. There's also been a lot of uh, youth uh, involved in the Me Too. Um, Me Too movement, yeah. Movement as well. Very much so. I well, get, get them involved. Be involved. I mean, that's the best thing. I mean, look at how many people vote a year. It's ridiculous. We have the lowest voting rate in, like, the world. Given the fact that there's other countries where you actually have to dodge bullets to go place your vote. Right. And we have to, like... You get off the couch. In. Yeah. It, it, you think about the profound nature of that. It's like I, I'm hoping we'll see a huge turnout in this next election. Yeah. I don't care. I don't even care who you vote for. Just right. re research it and vote your conscience. But vote. I mean, it's. Hey, Richard. Richard, I want to tease the um, the cabbage thing. Uh, he's got some pictures uh, yesterday. In, it was in, magnificent. In Todd's Science Kitchen, uh, I learned something new, and uh, here's some here's some little teases. We're gonna play the whole thing at the end of the show. That's right, on the counter. Sauerkraut. <laughs> no refrigeration. It was, no. like, it was like 3D Brussels sprouts. It was. It was. Mm. You don't need vinegar. There's no vinegar in it. It just that rots. That still shocks me. It rots on your, on your counter. It's awesome. So we're going to do that. Oh, by All the right. way, it is Happy National Pancake Day, and they do have a free short stack at IHOP. Really? But they would like you to tip and because they're raising money. That's a great idea. Isn't that a great idea? Oh, Sorry. by the way, <laughs> that is... Uh, uh, February 27th, <laughs> so if you watch this in June... Oh, yeah, you don't get a short stack. You're not going to so go sorry. get a short stack. All righty, let's go to Daisy. She's in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. She's brought to you by Always Black Friday, where it is 30 to 75% off every day. Also by Denali Performance Medical Center. If you've got old sports injuries, like your back or your shoulder, you'd like to get rid of them finally for good and without opioids, guess what? These are the guys to do it for you. And also by All Utah Plumbing, Heating, and Air. It's a great time to make sure your furnace is working at peak capacity because it looks like we're getting another snowstorm. It's allutahplumbing.com. Daisy, my dear, what's going on today? 
Thanks, Tadna, and hello everyone. Here's what's making news on Tuesday, February 27th on GephardDaily.com. Four men are in custody and two others are on the run after local FBI agents and officers from an area police department busted suspected members of an ATM theft ring. The, the arrests were made late Sunday night in Sandy as the men were attempting to steal cash from the bank machine at the Deseret First Credit Union at 9400 South and 1300 East. Investigators say four of the suspects arrived at the credit union not long after they had tried to knock off another ATM at the America First Credit Union at 9400 South Highland Drive. A local FBI spokeswoman confirmed late Monday that officers conducted an operation Sunday night, but did not release additional details. A 13-year-old boy from Kearns faces charges after police say he posted a picture of himself holding a rifle on Snapchat and added the advice not to come to school on Monday. On Sunday, unified police officials tracked down the teenager who attends Thomas Jefferson Junior High. Officers interviewed the boy and his parents. Police learned that the gun pictured was an airsoft rifle used for shooting plastic pellets in a paintball-type game, and there was no immediate threat to the school. The boy, whose name has not been released, was charged with terroristic threats, a third-degree felony, and was left in his parents' care. And on Monday afternoon, Murray and Unified Police officials spotted a stolen BMW. The car sped away and police gave chase. Officials put down spike strips to stop the BMW. At some point, a UPD vehicle collided with a Salt Lake County van. No one was seriously injured in the collision, but it did slow the chase. By then, the BMW driver and his female passenger had abandoned the car and fled on foot. Officers learned that the two had made their getaway in another vehicle, a slow-moving UTA bus. Police stopped the bus at 70th South Redwood Road and took the man and woman into custody. And time now for your Wasatch Front forecast, brought to you by Brio Technologies, the coolest audiovisual specialists in the state of Utah. Northern Utah can expect highs in the 40s for the next few days and nighttime temperatures just below freezing. Skies will be partly cloudy, but storm free in most parts of the state. That's just us until Friday, more or less, when more snow is predicted. So if you put off washing the grit and salt from the last storm off your car, Friday would be a really bad day to finally pay for a car wash. That's it for now. For more news and weather 24-7, go to GephardDaily.com. For now, it's Hudden Aaron. Back to you. Well, thanks, Daisy. So uh, you actually, when we do this for us, Utah plumbing, heating, and air. It's all utahplumbing.com. You just go there. They're going to take care of it. You know what? If you're going to remodel your bathroom, these are the people to do it from start to finish. They take you to the stores, the warehouses, and have you pick out the tile with them. They do that with the marble or the granite. If you want some more information, just go to allutahplumbing.com. You seriously have a cold? Yeah, I think so. All right, let's run down. Let's run down the uh, sickness in our home. I'm just going to scour the whole house with a flamethrower today because I think we're all just reinfecting each other. I'm sure I, really I put the do. dog outside first. Um, you started with pneumonia. Yeah, that's bad. And then? You had three colds within two months. Yeah. Zoe got a cold and then a cough that has still not left her, so we have to keep her window open at night and then bundle her up. And uh, poor Zachy. Uh, double ear infection and pink eye. Pink eye. It's like, that seems like a plague of Egypt, doesn't it? I well, think it is one of the seven plagues of Colorado Egypt. Colorado tick fever. It's the only thing we're really missing. Which they at, thought at one point Zachy had when he was a child. So, yeah, it just gets better and better. All right, so um, uh, tell me something good, would you? All right, this is really good. I mean, it's also brought to you by Always Black Friday. Your ex, uh, they have amazing deals. If you haven't been up there, just go to alwaysblackfriday.com. Take a look at the merchandise. They, it changes all the time, and you can find something absolutely amazing. Uh, 12th Street in Ogden. Now, I like this because if, if you, we talked yesterday a little bit about amnesty, about second chances for people with small misdemeanors. Spun was, expungement. Yeah, expungement? Was, yeah, yeah, exactly. We were focusing primarily down at Rio Grande where they were trying to find these people who had paid for their mistake, or it was 20 years ago, and it's like, but it's still on their record. Yeah, they paid uh, the ones that Rio Grande. It was the fact that um, they went to jail. If they had to go to jail for the time, they make, paid their fines. They did all the things right, and they're working towards getting off the street, and they have done that, and they've applied 
apply for jobs and they're really it's moving it's moving it's but, moving but then they look at your record and if it's still on there you yeah. don't get the job so that's well this is a good example of that well this is why i love this will avila he was in and out of jail over the course of 10 years he said i was an idiot okay okay came out and he said i got out for good and i put out 22 job applications and i was rejected 22 times because because of his record. Yeah. So, because he couldn't find anyone to hire him, he says, I will start a business. So he started a business called Clean Decisions, which is a commercial cleaning service. And he he's doing so well now. He's got 15 full-time employees, and all of them are former inmates. And he said, I wanted to be able to give them that first start in their resume so right. that they could get started right. again and they'd have a good job background. And a lot of the his employees were saying, this is the one thing that kept me from, from slipping back in. Because oh, yeah. I know that if I couldn't have found a job, I would have gone right back to what I was doing before. Um, he also started a nonprofit called Changing Perceptions, which I loved. Because basically what it does is once... Um, an inmate comes out of jail, uh -huh. is released, he pairs them with a mentor. Um, and the mentor is the one that goes, okay, let's go through those few steps. If you think about it, it's very similar like to Alcoholics Anonymous where they pair you with someone. Right. And that's the person who like maybe helps you get your house back in order, right. helps you walk through a schedule, gives you some ideas. And here, if you start freaking out, you can call them. Right. And here in Utah, you've probably been hearing more and more about this. It's called the Other Side Academy. Oh, it's so cool. And uh, the building they're trying to tear down, they finally got to tear down in 7th East. That's them. And what they do is they have a moving company. They uh, they teach people for catering. They have catering services. They do all these other stuff. And once again, these are people who are stepping out and need a start. And it's just a great program. And it's amazing. They have the, uh, they have pretty much almost the whole block. But you see these guys running around playing basketball and they're wearing their matching shirts. Yeah. And they look so happy. And it's like this is their second chance. And they're hanging out with people who understand. Other Side Academy. If you ever want to donate to them or volunteer, they're, it's really a beautiful organization. They're very or special. Hire them. Have them cater for you. Have yeah. Move exactly. your house. Exactly. I mean, it's just a great thing. So, in any case, this is what this guy was doing. But this is where it got cool. He'd been struggling to try to get the nonprofit going, and because nonprofits don't really make a lot of money. And, Hence um, the name. He, because of a news story that they had done in Chicago about how great this group was, John Legend, who I love, singing Legend, John Legend. Right. And I love him because his wife, Chrissy Teigen, is from Price. Utah, and she has a hysterical sense of humor. Funny. And she also talks a lot about, like, postpartum depression. She's really right. open about it. She's aware. And John, of course, is cool and, like, an amazing singer. Well, he heard about the story, and he said, I want to help you. So he donated uh, $50,000 in grant money. That'll work. And he said, Let's get, let me help you get that started. Let me see what we can do to, to support clean decisions, because this is a really great thing. Nice. Um, and, he, and Avila was just beside himself with excitement. He said, this means that I can keep this going for decades. He says, because the money will be reinvested and keep going. Right. But the fact he said that John Legend did this meant everything to him, because he said, it, it proves that I was human again, that people were seeing me and that they were seeing that I could offer something. You do it for other people. That How I could cool offer that? something to the world instead of taking. All right. And I guess that for John, he said, he, legend, he said he did this for personal reasons. So apparently there's somebody in his life yeah. that for whom this has mattered. Which so is very cool. I just think that's gorgeous. Another, uh, another uh, uh, email from one of our winners who went to Christopher's Prime Steakhouse and Chops and great side dishes. You. and. And stuff, when we sent them out, because we do that every Friday. Oh, the cheesecake and the lobster corn dogs. Since, Not together, since but both. Tomorrow is our anniversary of one year on the show. Uh, we continue to bribe you to watch as much as you can. And thank you so much, Christopher. a whole year with us. You must be out of your mind. They're crazy. Look, if you'd like to enter to win, it's really simple. You're probably watching us on Facebook at any time of the day or night. I don't care. If you're on Gephardt Daily, Gephardt Approved, just drop a comment saying, hey, I like Christopher's. If you're watching on the Todd and Aaron page and you're part of our conversation, we love you. Um, make sure that you just drop another quick comment about Christopher's and you're entered. Then on Friday, we draw a winner. You take three friends. Life is good. All right, so coming up next, we're going to make you feel bad because we have an 11-year-old who's uh, going to be a millionaire. Oh, it's Product Power Up Tuesday, and this 11-year-old right created the Hero Glove. I can hardly wait to tell you about it. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is brought to you by UtahCreditApproval.com. Bad things happen to good people, but you can get your credit back on track and get a reliable automobile by giving them a call. 801-404-7201. And also by Columbus Travel with spectacular deals on cruises and all-inclusive vacations. Go to ColumbusVacations.com. And all Utah Plumbing, Heating, and Air, where they have a winter special that they can check out your furnace and make sure that it's operating efficiently, saving you hundreds of dollars in energy bills. Just go to AllUtahPlumbing.com. Did you know that you can catch the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream on Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, and GetPartDaily.com any time of the day or night?
At Always Black Friday, we love a good deal. We buy new and used products at a discount so we can pass on the savings to you. And we're Get Part Approved. From electronics to clothing to appliances. If you want it, we have it at discount prices. Visit our eBay store or come to our warehouse at 865 West 12th Street in Ogden. Always Black Friday, where you can find Black Friday deals all year round. Happy Black Friday! Glove. The hair glove is a glove that helps your hand from cuts from life. Product Power Up Tuesday here on the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream. And I am so jealous. It's like, I don't even know what I was doing at 11, but I'm pretty sure I was mentally vegetating. And you've already created a brand new product, Miss Allie. How are you? I'm doing good. All right, now, so you have the Hero Glove, which I think is genius. And how did this start? Because you were really freaked out about cutting. What happened to you? Um, I cut my finger when I was little. You remember that kind of stuff because it's really horrifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you there. So how did you come up with the idea for the hero glove? Um, I was watching Shark Tank. <coughs> nice. And uh, a little girl invented something, mm -hmm. and I wanted to invent something too. So I wanted something to protect my hand, so... That's just evil genius. I was thinking about this because this would be great, like even like camping and outdoors and stuff, like if you're filleting fish and all those scary things, or maybe you're working in the shop and you want to keep all your fingers, it would be a good thing. So tell me about the process. You got started. You said, I, this is what I want to do. What did you do next? Um, first, my dad bought some samples mm -hmm. to see what it was made out of, and then it just went from there. That's so exciting. So the first time you put on the hero glove, were you like freaking out? Were you excited? Were you like apprehensive? How did you feel? I was nervous, but I was excited at the same time. So what was the first test run like? What did you do? Uh, well, usually we put a carrot where the finger goes and then see if it cuts. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it worked, it was great, it was awesome. And now you have no fear of cutting things. So, I mean, you know, I know we keep harping on the fact that you're like 11, and so I'm sure for you, are like, yeah, I know, I'm 11, that's, that's really great. But that really is amazing to come up with an idea like that, that fast, and now, like, you're a mogul. Oh. Hey, how hey, could hey. you do that? Facebook wants to know, they uh -huh. asked, uh, how many different materials did you go through? Um, because if you made a mistake there, your finger would come off. But did you try different, like, other things be before you got to the glove? Yeah, how did you... Um... We first looked <clears throat> what um, the glove was made of online, mm -hmm. and first I thought it was called Unicorn Hair, because that's its nickname, but I it's like, like it. called Dainini or something like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so that, so now that we've, you've gone from start to finish, you've thought of the idea, you put it into, pro, you know, into a product, you've now got the Hero Glove website, which is awesome. You've got your introductory video. Um, oh, by the way, if you want to go and pick up the Hero Glove today, it's HeroGlove.com, H-E-R-O, HeroGlove.com. If you want to buy one, um, they're going to do free shipping. Just put free ship at checkout, free ship at checkout, and uh, they'll do free shipping for you to get the glove. Now, so we have our first product. We already know you're evil genius. So, have you even started thinking about the next thing you want us to try? Um, <clears throat> probably we want to do adult sized. Smart. But we're going to stay kid sized for a little bit longer. I really love the idea of that, though. It's so smart. <coughs> do you have, are there any other products that you've been thinking about now that, you know, your brain has been percolating and you kind of have this genius thing going? Mm, not, not yet. Not really. You know we're gonna have to get you on Shark Tank, right? Dude, totally. I mean, and look at look at your face. Who would say no to you? Whoever would say no to you? So are your younger sisters jealous of you? I don't know. Probably because my younger sister really wants to be my business partner, but I'm telling her she's not gonna get paid. It's hard to work with family. It really is, I gotta be honest. So your dad's the one who's been kind of helping you with this though, right? Mm-hmm. That's pretty fun. So what was the biggest shock in becoming a businesswoman? What did you go, I did not know that would happen. Anything? Um, 
probably when I did pa product power up and going to like meetings and stuff. I didn't expect it to be like that. It's fun. And meetings are kind of boring, but that's part of being a business person. Sadly, it's true. I mean, this really, I, I have to tell you, this is really genius, though, because it's such a smart thing. And the fact that you've got the video where you're actually cutting things on your hand, I mean, that takes away all the fear for anybody else. I don't see how you can say no to this. Once again, you guys, if you want free shipping, just go to HeroGlove.com if you want to buy one. They're very affordable, $12.99. All kinds of different colors. There's pink, orange, green. If you need a spokesperson on the Home Shopping Network, I'm your man, all right? No. Got a gig. Got a gig. I think she can do it herself. Got a gig. So just put free ship at checkout. Free ship at checkout and they'll have free shipping today. So um, what's the biggest seller? The red one? The pink one-ish? You said black wasn't going so well. Yeah, because everyone likes color. I think so too. What's the weirdest thing you've cut with it? Because I'm sure you've experimented like crazy. I mean, I would... Probably... Um, I've always cut food, so... The carrot's always a good one because they're really hard to cut. So if you mm -hmm. can do that, you can do anything, pretty much. All right, so guys, Ali is like a classic example of what Product Power Up is about and how good this can be. So I, if you want to go take a look at these, once again, it is Hero Glove. That's HeroGlove.com. Um, and if you want to buy one, it's just put in free ship and when you check out and you get free shipping as well. So Ali, you totally rock. I have to tell you, you're a goddess. You going to come back when you have your next brilliant idea? Sure. Thank you. We like that. All right. We'll be right back. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, um, how not to get off an airplane. And by the way, if you think the sh seats are shrinking in the plane, it's not that your butt is getting bigger. They, they actually are shrinking. We'll tell you about it next. Hey, welcome back to the Todd Nair Morning Stream on GetPartDaily.com. Um, first of all, uh, I want to tell you about this, the, the, the uh, phone deal. This is so weird. Um, they've been warning us of this for about five years. But it doesn't make any logical sense. Yeah, go ahead and tell them. Sony's latest flagship phone, this is the Xperia XZ2. Why do they always have to do the little extra Because it makes them sound awesome. Numbers is, okay, well, then you there are. There it is. No headphone jack. Oh, man. No freaking headphone jack. They just unveiled oh, it at the Mobile World Congress. Mobile World the Congress. Oh, jeez. But all the tech heads were like, why don't, why don't well, you have you a have headphone the, you jack? Because you have the charging ones that you just stick in your ears that, that will fall out of my head, and I will lose them and step on them. That's what that will happen. The white cord. The earbuds? There's a reason there's a cord is so you can find them. That's it. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. But it doesn't make any sense, and I know that they're doing it so they can force you to buy the expensive Bluetooth, you know, wireless right, headphones. But right. people still like to have something plugged in. That doesn't seem reasonable well, to me. And just so, so I have a question then. So, how do you do hands-free? Is the mic on the phone, or is the mic attached uh, inside uh, on the listening piece? Don't know, do we? Hmm. You know why? Because they're not telling. This does seem like an insidious plan just to force you to buy blue. It's hard headphones. to change, though. You know, when Apple came out, they took away all your buttons. And everybody's like, where are the buttons? And it's like one button. And Steve Jobs was like, they kept saying, no, we're going to put eight. And he goes, oh. no, you're not. You're going to put one. Back and forth, back and forth. Guess who won? I remember who it was. It was Kid Craddock, who was a former radio that. colleague of ours who's passed away. But he was already nationally syndicated. And he had all the cool gadgets. And he was showing us. And he showed you how you could enlarge the screen by using your fingers. And, and we're like, like, what is this technology? No. Oh, the devil himself. It was so funny. But I remember just watching that going, oh, my gosh. Right. This is magic. And 15 years later, we bought one. So... Um, Technology is just like the weirdest thing yeah, going on. Yeah, I, I would never buy that. I even right. have my headphone jack. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. let's talk about plane etiquette, shall we? Yeah, let's do that. And uh, it's funny because while we're talking about this, the uh, Southwest Airlines flight yesterday where the engine you know, caught fire. That's a bad thing. And it had returned back to the Salt Lake City Airport. Yes. Where my brother-in-law David was on it, and David's very British, so he had a stiff upper lip. But he was telling us the cabin was filled with smoke. Yikes. And and the, the captain was saying, we're going to have to ditch in, in the Great Salt Lake. They were already talking. Holy crap. And so they were, like, having them do crash positions and stuff. 
So I'm and I'm think of the this, brine shrimp. I'm hearing this from my sister, and I went, I know this is going to sound completely callous, but it really did is. Get any pictures? That's after we found <laughs> out he was to put okay. Him on the show. <laughs> that was after we found out he was okay. We didn't ask like you know, is this like yeah, whatever? Is he you know? We got photos. Did you find his phone? Well, Not, I was thinking wasn't photos like that. first, but I did I did ask if he was okay. So first. they did turn around. They did land. And everybody was happy. But so they didn't have to use the emergency chute even, which is nice. However. United Airlines had a problem with that on Monday. What? Um, this is the weirdest thing ever. So they were about to take off, yeah. and then a passenger... This is a whole different story. Yeah, whole different story. The United right. Airlines. A passenger panicked and said, oh, man, I'm on the I'm on the wrong flight. you got to get me off. And they're like, dude, everything's pulling away from the oh, gate. Did you, they you already know? pulled away. Yeah, you're like, uh -huh. we can't. You're screwed. Sorry. I'm still trying to figure out how he managed to be on the wrong flight, and they didn't catch Doesn't it. Doesn't matter. The coolest thing happened coming up. Newark to Tampa. So it was delayed. He, because he was freaking out and they wouldn't let him off the plane, right. he pulled the opened the emergency exit, which then instantly pops out the chute, you know, the big inflatable chute that goes down to the ground, and jumped on to escape and starts running back to the concourse. Self-starter, that's what he is. And He's like, a go-to guy. And they're like, dude, that's that's not Illegal. how you do this. You can't right. Yeah, so he was he was of course arrested. But it was really, really weird. It took them up to five. It took them five hours to get everything back in order. Oh yeah. So they could go. Oh, you have to take the whole thing out and the whole canister part. I've seen this. And then they put the whole thing in, and it's got all the big CO2 and the oxygen things to inflate it really fast. It's so really I'm sure awesome. the passengers that were still seated on the plane for the next five right. hours super appreciated his plan. I would have asked for a new plane, but five they don't hours. listen to me. Well, I guess they didn't have anything to swap out, but five hours. To fix that. Thanks, pal. Speaking about airplanes, yes. I'm going to talk about your butt. I, you the know, FAA I... is, is reviewing uh, regulations on airline seats. It usually doesn't weigh in on this, and I mean weigh in on this on purpose. They don't, they don't usually do that, but this time they're starting to look at it because things have been changing for the worst. Uh, oh, yeah. First of all, uh, anyone who thought your fanny was getting bigger, you know, you're like, oh crap, I've got the big butt, I can't even fit. No, it's not you, it's them. All right, so uh, basically, um, it's seat sizes and legroom, and the FAA will will soon announce how they feel about it. Now, the group said the pitch of the seat, the pitch, the distance between your seat and the one directly in front of you, mm -hmm. has decreased an average of 35 inches to 31. So when they lean back. They're like this far away from you. Oh, yeah. And have, don't you remember that one time we both had our laptops open and the guy in front of me reclined? And he literally cracked my screen and I hit my laptop slammed shut. And it's true. When they recline full, I will never do that to anyone now because when they recline fully all the way, their head is literally in your lap. 35 to 31, and some have actually reduced it to 28. Soon, you'll be sitting behind the first person like you're on a bobsled. Just wrapped around them. No chair. <laughs> we'll all just be in a row with benches. <laughs> just hang on. That'll be your crash position. position. Oh. Okay, now what about your butt? 18.5. Down to 17. Really? That's not even fair. All right, so they let's... They pulled uh, an inch and a half off, and that is a crucial inch and a half of your seat. Okay, let's be yeah. honest. All right, so I'm going to do a little science here. Oh, thank God. Would you help hold that yeah. right there? Okay. All right, so, sorry, okay. So if I take a marker and I go there, and then I go here, okay. Now, what we're seeing here, hold that for me, would you? Mm -hmm. What we're seeing here, uh, I'm gonna tip it. All right, I'm gonna go this way. There we go, okay, there we go. Okay, so I got side of my butt here, side of my butt here so that would be like like that okay so uh that's my butt and i don't have a tape measure unfortunately i'll have to do it the old way which is uh six inches uh so six 12 15 i got 15 inches on the behind 15 inches so that gives you a full two inches to spare. My, my butt is small compared to my stomach. You have a uh, lovely butt. Thanks. Um, but uh, 17 inches is, um, I, I don't think that, because the population is getting bigger. Well, the thing about the Oakland booty, everybody cries is the big the big booty now. It's like, so how are you squeezing that into a 17-inch seat? And a spatula and some Vaseline. 
I mean, it, it's it's bad enough. I mean, and especially with you because you're six two, and so getting leg room. For the, the leg room is horrible. Is like the worst thing ever. But the seat thing makes me feel even worse because now you're even more squished next to other people. And you know the seats in the very back, the seats in the very back that don't recline, they should be stinking free. They should be. They should be free. You know, one of the airlines is already experimenting with stand up seats, right? Yeah. Where basically it's just the. What could go wrong? It's like a thing that you just sort of hover on and kind of rest your butt, but you're standing up. I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen. That's dispiriting. It really is. All right. So coming up, we're going to talk about uh, uh, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith. Jay from Silent Bob. Silent Bob mm -hmm. uh, had a medical issue and he's talking about it and he actually tweeted from his uh, his, uh, his hospital bed. He took an awesome selfie. But then someone, el another A-lister said something really nice and everything just went downhill from there. It's coming up next. We'll explain. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is brought to you by Fink and McGregor, Mortgages Made Simple. If you go to fink-mcgregor.com, you'll find out that you can get a mortgage with a credit score as low as 600. Fink and McGregor, also by The Vein Clinic. If you go to theveinclinic.com, you can schedule an appointment and find out some amazing options for pain-free removal of varicose veins and spider veins. Your legs can look great again with The Vein Clinic. And also by Black Diamond Experts. They're experts in electric, plumbing, heating, and air. And they also have a brand new store up in Ogden now. If you'd like to reach them you can go to blackdiamondexperts.com so Jeff you do mortgages right I do how do you do well you go to our website 4minutemortgage.com fill out the application we'll call you within one business day the whole thing takes about a month to start to finish we went to the bank they got really personal I went through all of our personal records and all of our finances. And then there was that little deal about the $8,000 closing cost. <laughs> took like four months. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Hollywood Connection. Welcome back, Todd and Aaron. Morning stream here on GetPowerDaily.com. And Hollywood Connection, of course, brought to you pleasingly by our friends over at Connect Heating and Air. They can do a maintenance schedule for all your commercial properties, so you never have to worry about it again. Just go to UtahHeatingAndCooling.com. Right, tell me about okay, this. Okay, so I just think Kevin, he, of course, Kevin Smith, uh, director for, like, Clerks, Jane Silent Bob. Right. Uh, you know, he, uh, a wonderful host of characters. He always hosts the IMDB Lounge up at Sundance every year, interviewing other stars. Um, he... Uh, ended up in the hospital and there's a great selfie and there's a great tweet from him where he said wow I felt kind of bad so I just checked in with my doctor and boy isn't that lucky because I had a massive heart attack he had 100% blockage of his LED artery which is the one that you had <laughs> yeah completely occluded yeah I love his selfie um, now Chris Pratt who is Guardians of the Galaxy great guy and he's in he was in community on uh, TV right Yes. Adorable guy. I think. And he says, Kevin, we don't know each other too good, but I've loved you since clerks, and I'm praying my butt off for you because I believe in the healing power of prayer. He says, can you please pray with me, people? So basically urging everyone to send sure. good vibes. Nice thoughts. Well, I was reading down through the thread. I went, what a sweet thing for Chris to do and right. jump in. People started being really rude and insulting Why? him and telling him, don't press God on me, and God isn't involved in here, and how dare you say to pray, and who do you think? And it's like, you know, he just... You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. He was when you just, live in your parents' basement, you get a little crabby. Maybe you could just, uh, that was my suggestion. Well, of all people, um, his uh, his uh, friend James Gunn, who is the director of Guardians of the Galaxy and is now one of the, I think, the third most powerful guy at Marvel, stepped in and he goes, look, dude, I just read Chris Pratt's tweet to Kevin Smith saying he would pray for him and then made the mistake of reading the comments, which go off on Chris for saying he'd pray. <laughs> And I think people misunderstand the backlash against thoughts and prayers. And this is important because people have started to say, when when you're involved in all these tragedies and there are like thoughts and prayers, it's like, no, that doesn't really... Doesn't help? Yeah, I would really like you, for instance, yeah. maybe you could lobby on behalf of, of you know, in the right. government if there's a violence. Or maybe if it's a disaster, instead of saying thoughts and prayers, you could donate some money. We see it on Facebook all the time as someone's father's going in for surgery, thoughts and prayers. I mean, people ask for all the time, and, and I don't have any problem. With and that. so they were basically mocking him, saying he wasn't doing anything, and he was just fobbing it off for prayer. So then James comes back with, 
Nobody expects Chris Pratt to shoulder the doctors out of the way and perform heart surgery on Kevin Smith. <laughs> Nor does Kevin need Chris to pay his medical bills. So I think his prayers are appreciated and all he can do. Right. So it's true. There are many times that, yeah, thoughts and prayers are not really doing anything. You need to go out and actually help. But in cases like this, why would you be mean to somebody for making a nice statement? Because they live in their parents' basement and they eat Cheetos. I love the thing of, well, no one expects them to shoulder the doctors out of the way and do it right. himself. Uh, I would like to use this as a teaching moment. Go get your heart checked. Check your cholesterol. Please. Do it. Because you know what? When you're on the ground moaning, it's not that cute. It was a very terrifying time for us. Now, go eat some bacon. Well, yeah. Information time. Let's put something else, too. Okay, first of all, this is hysterical. This was like front oh, page yeah, right. of all of the local TV uh, station websites yesterday. So anyway. Really? Yeah. But apparently this is a thing because there were yeah. hundreds of comments. Metallica, Metallica the band, you know them, they've announced their North American tour starting in September, announced all their dates, and they're doing some really random places, and they're going to small places like Birmingham, Alabama, or Sioux Falls, South Dakota, but they are also coming here to Salt Lake That's City. That's right, baby, Metallica. Metallica. And I went, oh, okay, and I was going to turn the page, and I saw the comments, I'm like, this is the best thing oh, that yeah. has ever happened in my life. Yeah, they, they, I'm so happy right now, I want to die. Okay, I'm going oh, to oh, cover the mic for everybody listening. So I was like, okay, good. Okay, so in case you were also one of those people who is now fangirling and having a squee moment, congratulations, Metallica is coming so to town. So oil up those wheels on the walker, people. It's time <laughs> to rock. Being brought to you by, give me an old person's liquid thing. Uh, preparation H. Geritol. Pre preparation H. Good oh. grief. That's all I could think of. All right, let's go to Daisy. She's in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. She is brought to you by Think and McGregor Mortgages Made Simple. If you need more information about how all these crazy interest rates have been evolved, evolving and you need help, these are the guys. Just go to think-mcgregor.com. Someone will call you back within the next business day. Also by The Vein Clinic. Go to thevainclinic.com. You can book a consultation. You cannot believe what they can do to get rid of varicose veins now and make your legs look like your age again. And it can be painless. I had it done and I could see it the results in three days. It was wonderful. Also by Brio Technology, your experts in lighting, sound, and video. Um, if you need to bring your business into the, this current century and be cool and hip and, and really find an amazing way to reach people, just go to BrioAudioVisual.com. Daisy, my dear, what's going on today? Thanks, Todd and Aaron. Here's what's making national and world news on Tuesday, February 27th on Gephardt Daily. Florida's state Senate has approved a bill to impose new restrictions on gun purchases, but it voted down a ban on assault weapons. The new bill requires a three-day waiting period for all gun purchases and increases the age limit for buying a semi-automatic weapon from 18 to 21. It also bans the sale of bump stocks and it makes it easier for law enforcement to take firearms from a potential threatening person. The bill will also establish a committee to investigate the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, which killed 17 people. Lawmakers in South Korea have reduced work hours from 68 to 52 hours per week in a move to improve labor productivity and the quality of life for its citizens. Data from 2017 shows South Koreans work the second longest hours among the 35 member states of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Mexico comes in at number one. The United States comes in at 16th. All South Korean companies must trim hours by July of 2021 at the latest. And California state officials have announced they will allow testing of self-driving vehicles on the road without a human backup driver by April 2nd. Self-driving vehicles have been allowed on California roads since 2014, but required a human in the vehicle who could take the wheel in case of emergencies. Monday's announcement means a human will no longer be required in vehicles while they are being tested. California will still require that a human operator monitor the vehicle from afar. About 50 companies currently test self-driving vehicles with a human. And now time for another look at your Wasatch Front weather brought to you by Brio Technologies, Utah's top audiovisual specialist. Daytime temperatures in most of Utah are expected to stay in the 40s this week, but nighttime temperatures will still be below freezing, so make sure to bring pets inside.
skies will be partly cloudy, but the next significant snowstorm should not hit until late Thursday or sometime on Friday. And by the way, clear streets and clean sidewalks don't mean it's okay to dig out the shorts and flip flops, even if all the other kids are doing it. If all the other kids took the polar bear plunge, would you? We hope not. Stay warm, you tons. That's it for now. For more news across the nation and around the world, go to getpartdaily.com. For now, Todd and Aaron, back to you. Thank you, my dear Daisy. You know what? I got to say this right off the top. Okay. I don't believe the forecast anymore. It's not Daisy's fault. Don't believe it. I got cheated out of two storms, but I have taken care of the problem, people, because this weekend when those storms are going to come in, mm -hmm. I have dismantled part of my snowblower for you. Just to guarantee that we get them? Because I had it all tuned up and ready. I know. It was even facing outward in the garage so you could just turn it on and open the door. And we my were, dream. It's my dream. so ready. So anyway, yeah. So I'm sorry. Babe. I have dismantled it. Uh, it will snow now. So you're welcome. Thank you. Oh, we got that to look forward to. So that's nice. All right. So chi uh, chi No Boy. discount for you, lady. Read this. this. It's hysterical. This is the weirdest thing. It's right behind me. It's this one? No, middle. Oh, okay. Um, so so Chick-fil-A. This is so funny. Uh, and the, re, the different uh, people who have different stores. And they've set up a deal where they, uh, for officers. Uniformed uh, officers. Uh, they can get a discount for their Chick-fil-A. And who doesn't want a chicken sandwich at any time of the day or night? Because I will totally go for a chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A. Now, in Georgia, a lady was in the drive-thru and she said, you know what I want? Chick-fil-A. By the way, largest franchise, most popular franchise in the country. Mm -hmm. So she said, I really want that. It's a great that. one. They treat their, their franchisees really well. But I do not want to pay full price. So she wanted that. She was aware of the discount. So, so she's, she's like, I'm an officer. On the, on the, yeah, may I help you? Yes, I would like to uh, get the Chick-fil-A sandwich, but I'd like the discount because I'm an officer. <coughs> Are you on uniform? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm sorry, we only do it for people in uniform. I don't think so. I'm coming in. So she goes into the store. Bless you. She goes into the store and she says, what's up with this? I, I'm an officer. She wasn't. I get my discount. Now, first of all, how hard up are you for 75 cents off? I think it's that or something. And she goes, no, no. Okay. It escalates from there. She takes out her wallet and flashes a badge. Silver badge. Ooh, okay. Puts it in. She says she was undercover. She put it in. It keeps going. So that should end. But it doesn't. No. It keeps. She's bound to determine to get this free sandwich one way or another. It keeps getting worse. Uh, so basically, um, they, she, uh, she said, well, you better call the, the main office and find out about my discount. And so she calls back and she says, yeah, what about my discount? And they said, well, we've checked the records. You're not a police officer. As a matter of fact, some people are looking for you now. She Ooh. was arrested and booked into Cobb County Jail, two felony counts and impersonating an officer. That's a bad, they hate that. I wonder if there, uh, there's Chick-fil-A in prison. My personal favorite is she was screaming in the middle of the lobby like, you're endangering my life because I'm undercover and now people might find out that I'm an undercover cop because you won't give me my sandwich. And, and she's it's like, swearing and stuff. You know, crazy and... satellites going over and it, it, it just. It's funny. <laughs> I liked it. But I you know what? We're going to coming up. We're talking about fast food today, evidently, because there's a couple of big things that are going on. Two glorious bits of news from and there's, McDonald's. And there's a sauce that people riot over. $250 for this sacred sauce. It's coming up next. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is brought to you by Fink and McGregor. If you go to fink-mcgregor.com, there's a short four-minute quiz, and at the end of it, you can find a whole array of mortgage options, and someone will call you back from Fink and McGregor within the next business day. Also by Utah Credit Approval. Go to utahcreditapproval.com because they know that bad things happen to good people, but that shouldn't stop you from repairing your credit and getting a reliable automobile at utahcreditapproval.com. And also you, all Utah plumbing, heating, and air. John has 24-7 service because he knows that emergencies can happen any time of the day or night. And right now they have a $69 special to check out all your heating systems to make sure they're working well. Just go to allutahplumbing.com.
Look at that sun, huh? That is gorgeous. That is nice. Morning Mountain Cam brought to you by Brio Technologies. All right, McDonald's, really quick on this. Foam containers are going away. Foam containers are going away. Uh <laughs> Take care it's of the that. single biggest pollutant that McDonald's has had, and the, the environmental groups are going, please, please get rid of this, please. And they're like, okay, but the biodegradable stuff's really expensive. 100% recycled fiber based materials by 2020. Everything. So the style of styrofoam's going away. Can you imagine the bulk of, of styrofoam from McDonald's and how? how fast that will cut down the pollution. Er, everybody amazing. else, Dunkin' Donuts, Jabba Juice, a bunch of other companies have jumped on the wagon Peer are al already doing it. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I want you to think back to uh, Mulan. The movie came out in 1988. In honor of that, <clears throat> McDonald's came out with a Szechuan sauce. <clears throat> Excuse me. And evidently, it got a little bit popular well, it also became a, a joke staple. It became Rick and Morty's Szechuan sauce because it was so big on the show. So they thought, hey, we'll roll this back out again. And uh, that'll be nice. And so they sent out a few cases to each of the McDonald's. And I guess they underestimated the value of the show because people were rioting when their McDonald's didn't have any, especially in college towns. You would see frenzied calls from everybody going, wait, this McDonald's doesn't have the Rick and Morty Szechuan sauce. Do you have it? Do you have it? And it got to the point where they were actually selling it off on eBay for $250 packets of Rick and Morty Szechuan sauce. All right, so this is what happened. McDonald's said Sunday it has shipped 20 million sauce packets across the United States. I'm not sure that's enough. And they're going to say, they're going to bring this out. Oh, i got to tell you where they're bringing it out, otherwise you're going to kill me. Here, look at that. Wait, wait. No, go. And so anyway, so this is all because of a movie release in 1988. This is kind of like people get really excited about the fact that the the, uh, the McRib is coming back. I have friends who actually like get really psyched about it. And I, I guess I don't understand, but I think it's an American thing, and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. seriously, 20 million sauce packets. They were talking to somebody on 7th Avenue and 34th Street in New York, and he was saying that he had a line that wrapped around the block trying to get the Szechuan sauce. Now, they must hand it out at the counter. They can't just have this willy-nilly out. You know, oh, so well, I think you have to buy the chicken to go two, with it. You get two. You get two. Oh, they also brought back the, the green shamrock shake. Oh, for St. Patrick's right. Day. Yeah. I had one last Friday in honor of this. As and a how fact. was that? Uh, Shamrocky? It's green-tastic. It's green-tastic. You know when you're getting a novelty shake from McDonald's, what you're getting. I don't even have to describe it. I wonder it's if they're going to do in Chicago that it, for St. Patty's Day. They always dye the river green. River green. Uh, they're going to. Of course Non-toxic, and they just do it, and it's just like green. Look at that. Um no, they have huge celebrations in Chicago. You know one of the biggest St. Patrick's Day celebrations? Butte, Montana. And Denver. Butte, Montana. Yeah. Why? People come in from all over the world for their St. Patrick's Day celebration. Why? Why Butte? I am not clear, but they do. I mean, thousands upon thousands of people swell the town for St. Patrick's Day. That's crazy. Day. I know Denver's like third in the country. It's just nuts. All right, so you're going to tell me about romance, aren't you? Well, you know, they always say opposites attract. Yes. And, oh, it's so beautiful. and oh, it's, Well, it's really interesting. Um, humans became monogamous, actually, um, pretty much just recently, they say, within the last century and a half. Um, they I don't understand what you just said. Well, they believe that monogamy, monogamy right. staying together, emerged so that right. males could protect their infants from other males in the ancestral groups who would kill them in order to mate with their mothers. Like you know, a lion. Whole, yeah, like That's the how whole, the lions work. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So, but it's interesting, uh, scientists in Canada are suggesting that a rise in sexually transmitted infections um, as the group became larger right. was another reason that they went into monogamy as, as a way of like, you know, saving and right, the, right. the bloodline and keeping right. it right. put together. But here's what they didn't f find. They say, that you, you know, the old saying that opposites attract, they say, no, that's actually not the case at all. And they went back to uh, like ancestral predicators to, to show this because yeah. um, everything, is, uh, everything is based on... Um, the positivity is based on like, uh, likeness. Like, you know how if you like somebody, you'll start mimicking their facial so expressions. So something or, in common. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, you know, you'll Im imitate their their expressions. You'll imitate their pose. Right, or, or, or if they like painting and art and stuff, and you do too. I mean, that's a, a shared experience. Similarity is associated with attraction. So that's where they say that this is, it's called associative mating, meaning that uh, you are drawn specifically because they are so like you, and that is what makes you attached to them so strongly. What they're saying, though, um, that the differences in personality or race or education or gender, none of those really actually come in as a predicator for your attraction to somebody. It still comes down to the basic ways that you're actually alike. 
So even if you think you're dating someone who's opposite of you, there's probably, so probably more than so you many know. commonalities that drew you that right. you're not even thinking about. Isn't that interesting? I, I think it's true. When we met, we both did the same job, both in radio. Um, that's it. No, um, um, no, we had a ton of things alike. Part of our, had, part of the way we were raised, that yeah. was part of our family structure. You had been back east, and I grew up there. We both liked each other's eyes. Yeah. He has nice eyes. Stop it. All right. Anyway. Um, but yeah. So if you think you're dating someone, it's like no, he has nothing Scottish. like. Both that Scottish. We're both Scottish. Thank you, Richard. Right. But cheap. If you, if you do think you're dating someone who's who's separate from you, go back and take a look at, at uh, what you're actually having in common. Because right. It's probably much greater than the fact that you're an opposite opposite. Or if it didn't work out, go back and look at it and see if mm. maybe that could be coming into play. Hey, uh, coming up just a second. My sauerkraut video. I'm very proud of you. I get so distracted by uh, Facebook. Uh, it's disgusting. So anyway, I want to tell you one more thing about because um, uh, oh, people... Corinne goes get a room. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Corinne. So uh, so everyone likes a lot of people are liking boutique hotels now. Um, in town, we have uh, the one down by the Capitol Theater, um, Monaco. The Monaco is a boutique. Hotel. This stuff and the furnishings and stuff, kind of quirky, kind of cool, kind of artsy, and there's uh, they're all over the place. They're all around the country. I love boutique hotels. So there is a boutique hotel in Sydney, Australia. Australia. I love that place. It's on Cockatoo Island, which is insanely cool real estate because it's in the Sydney Harbor. It takes a look at the Sydney uh, Opera House, the incredible bridge. All have just, it's the most beautiful view. One whole wall is glass. You can look out upon your land. Upon the beautiful harbor. No dancing naked. I wouldn't. So anyway, it's really nice. It's three hundred and eighty five dollars a night. Spendy. Oh really, yeah. Spendy, yeah. It's like what did you paddle a canoe to get to Sydney? Because the expense. Uh, it has a it has a uh, espresso machine. Very cool. Of course it has air conditioning. Of course it has a plunge pool. I love plunge pools. I know, right? Just the name is makes it fun. I know. Um, and so, um, and uh, so, basically, sunset and sunrise. You can see both from this hotel mm. room. And it's totally luxe. It's just beautiful. And it's three eighty five, and it's a shipping container. Wait, go back to that last part. It's 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 a shipping container. Now, this is an example of what it would look like. Wow. That's basically what it would look like. That is what it looks like. That's that's actually from the hotel. I can recognize it. That's it? And look at the, and look it's at the deck. It's on the ground. I thought it would be up higher. No, look at the deck and how beautiful that is. Oh, I do like and it. And you can see more of the shipping containers behind it, too. I do like it. That is so cool. Isn't I would cool? like it just because it was made out of a shipping container. I have it's a, still beautiful. I have a certain passion and in, in, uh, interest in shipping containers and converting them into... Uh, living spaces. And You've been stuff. dreaming of having a cabin out of a shipping container for a long time. Four of them, two upright like guard towers, and then you got one like this, and then another one comes in like this. Wait, I need two more now. One, two. It would be so much fun. Cut out the windows with a settling torch, frame the thing up. I want to do it so bad. And another thing I want to do is yesterday. I was watching, you go through, and I'm going through, and a lot of people on our Facebook page, because there's a billion of you, uh, post a lot of cooking stuff, which I appreciate, and I love it. And someone put up uh, this this jar of pickled um, Brussels sprouts. He has this thing about bar food. He's like pickled eggs before. You just like this stuff. Pickled you like beets. pickling things. And so there it was. It was just sitting there. It had some uh, red uh, pepper, pepper flakes in it, chili, chili pepper flakes. And I went, that looks interesting. So I had to go to the store anyway. I brought home the cabbage. And I looked it up, and cabbage has no vinegar in it. It rots. That really surprises me. I thought it, it did, too. It's controlled spoilage. So we're going to say goodbye right now, and I'm going to let you look at my uh, my cabbage video. So thanks very much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's it's the anniversary, the one-year one year anniversary. anniversary of the show. And thank goodness the success is based on videos like this. See ya. Hi everyone, it's Todd here, and a lot of you ask, uh, hey Todd, why don't you ever get anything done? It's because I'm distracted easily. I've been on the internet. I fell upon, oh, pickles. Pickles led me to coleslaw. Coleslaw led me to sauerkraut. Sauerkraut? I've never made sauerkraut before. You want to make sauerkraut? Let's do it. First thing to do is cut the cabbage up in quarter inch slices. Shall we do that? This is boring. Let's make it quick. Pew! All right, now what we need to do is put this in a bowl. We're going to put it in a bowl because we're going to add the salt 
on top of it and we're going to massage the cabbage. This is an adult show, by the way. Massage the cabbage with some sea salt. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put about a tablespoon in there like this. We're going to massage the water out of it. All right. We'll be right back. All right. So I've been doing this for about 10 minutes. What you're trying to do is break it down. And if you can hear the noise, you're breaking it down on a cellular level. How's that? All right. So I think this is about done. And you're trying to get most of the water out so the fermentation can take place. All right. That's, that's good. We need a jar. Like that. All right, here is the jar. We're going to start filling it with our cabbage. And I didn't know this, but I thought there was vinegar in sauerkraut, but evidently there's not. It's just its own fermentation. 2% salt solution. So that's what? Four cups of unchlorinated water with a teaspoon of salt. Not iodized salt, sea salt. What you do is you pack it in here and then you have to pack it down and get as much air out as you can. I always thought there was I always thought there was vinegar in this. But there's not. So you just keep packing it up, packing it up, packing it up. One of the important things it told me, it warned me about, was uh, make sure that you don't screw the lid on all the way because this ferments. This is going on top of your countertop. So as it ferments, gases will be released. Much like when you eat sauerkraut, more gases will be released. And the other thing is to make sure that get about two inches from the top, two inches from the top, like that, because you can't have anything sticking out of the liquid. Now, there's not a lot of liquid in here, and that's why you make the brine solution. So I'm going to call that good. And now, I'm going to add the brining solution till it covers like this. Now just to make sure, look at the bubbles coming out. Look at that. Just like it's supposed to. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the cores that I cut out of the cabbage and I'm going to put them in there just to make sure that it keeps the other cabbage down underneath the solution that. Then I put the top on loosely and we are good to go. We sit it on the countertop for three days and then we have sauerkraut. But wait, then I got distracted again. And I thought to myself, if cabbage works, why not Brussels sprouts? I'll spare you the cutting. Wait a minute, the cutting part was way too fun. All right, let's go. There you go. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to break these down in the salt solution, which is probably a huge mistake, but I'm not going to anyway because I'm kind of tired. And by the way, thanks for all the comments in the last video. I know uh, someone suggested this is like uh, cooking lessons on meth because I go kind of fast, but let's just review why I'm doing this, okay? So you've got your, you've got your cabbage, you've got your salt that you put in, you beat it up in the bowl, and you break it down. When you're done doing that, 8 to 10 minutes, then you then put it in the jar, any extra room on top without liquid, you go ahead and you add a 2% salt solution, which is 2% salt and non-chlorinated water, 4 cups of that. You fill it to the top just over the cabbage, or in this case, Brussels sprouts, and then you just pour it in. Get it up over the top. Make sure nothing is above the liquid. Leave two inches on top and then cover it gently. I say gently with a loose lid on your countertop for three days. And after that, you can put it into your refrigerator. And that is 
cabbage without vinegar. Uh, we'll see if it works out. Uh, I'm not liable for any of this, so, so uh, just, uh, be, uh, be careful.